When the trial for the Alipur conspiracy case was going on in court of Beechcroft, his defense counsel, C.R. Das, made this historical remarks. Long after the controversy will be hushed in silence, long after the turmoil, the agitation will have ceased, long after he is dead and gone, he will be looked upon as the poet of patriotism, as the prophet of nationalism and the lover of humanity. Long after he is dead and gone, his words will be echoed and re-echoed, not only in India, but across distant seas and lands. In 1910, Sri Aurobindo left the political arena and chose to withdraw to Pondicherry, a tiny French settlement on the shores of the Bay of Bengal. Here, he dedicated himself to explore the uncharted horizon of man's destiny. As came the mother in 1914, Sri Aurobindo brought out his journal in collaboration with the mother and her husband Paul Richard, named Arya. Disciples gathered around her from all parts of the world for a life based on spiritual realization, the ideal being the attainment of the life divine here on this earth and in the earthly existence. Thus grew the Sri Aurobindo ashram spontaneously in the course of the years, with Sri Aurobindo and the mother at its center. His practice of yoga became more and more intense. The ashram at Pondicherry was meant to be the cradle of the new world. Sri Aurobindo's love for motherland glowed forever in his heart. Thank you.